Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, it is highly awaited that we come in with our honest review of the inaugural sailing of the Icon of the Seas on a Royal Caribbean. Listen, we're about to give you the deets on the ship experience, the food, the drinks, the private island of Coco Cay, including the new adults only area over there. Y'all gonna wanna hear about this. We're also gonna tell you who we think that this cruise is for and is it worth the hefty price tag? Are y'all ready to get into it? Let's go. First impressions of the Icon of the Seas. Now, our first impression is going to be different than everyone else's first impressions because yeah. we had the unique opportunity to see that ship come into its home port about a month ago while we were on another sail. And we brought that to you all via live stream on Instagram and also on YouTube. So go ahead and hit the link below if you want to see that raw footage. But that right there yes. made us even more excited about this sailing. Like we had booked back in November, but seeing it up close and personal, hearing the music, seeing the staff yeah. all around the ship in Eunice, I mean, it was amazing to see. And it just made us hype for this very first time that we step foot on board. So stepping on board <laughs> of the Icon of the Seas, let's go ahead and get the, the embarkation and the debarkation out the way. It was smooth. smooth I don't know how they do it, but we were on that ship yeah. within five to 10 five minutes. Five to 10 minutes, and that included taking pictures. So as soon as we got on board, we was greeted by the greeters. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that was like, your rooms was ready and we got champagne, champagne for, for you. Everybody. But I barely heard them say that because I, my head was <laughs> on a swivel like, yes. yo. And the one thing about Royal Caribbean is they make their colors so vibrant yeah. that you feel <clears throat> like. <laughs> you feel like you're in a coloring book. Yes. But in a good way. All right, y'all. As much as we was excited about everything we saw when we walked on this ship, we was met with this horrible smell. We said it smelled like cheeses and... Skit. Yeah. All mixed together. And so as the trip started progressing, it was in the elevators. Yeah, it guess. was in the promenade. It, it got so bad that people would get out the elevators when the elevator, they were like, you don't want to get in here. Don't get in it there. It smells horrible in here. So we experienced that, experienced that for about two, maybe two and a half days. Yeah, and then and it then went away. The, then eventually it just, it just went away. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about the, the ship and the things that you can do on mm -hmm. the ship. Uh, like we said, the ship is amazing. When yes. you first walk into the ship, the first thing that grabs your attention and grab you by your throat is the pearl. I of know course. a lot of you guys have already seen it, but I'm telling you, seeing it on videos does mm -mm. it no justice. And also what's so amazing about the ship, and I know probably in your mind, this is a huge ship and it's going to be a lot of walking from here to there. Now, let me tell you, there is they walking, but it is not walking like you think. Royal Caribbean actually breaks down their ships into neighborhoods. So on this ship, they had eight neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So they had Chill Island, Thrill Island, the Aquadome, Central Park. They had the uh, seat was a surf Surfside, Surfside, Aquadome. Uh, they had the I did I said the Aquadome. They Royal had Promenade, Royal Promenade, Sweet Neighborhood, Sweet Neighborhood, and we missing one more. Hideaway. And the hideaway. hideaway. Yep. So those was the eight places that you could actually go and hang out. So we had loved that the ship, as massive and enormous as it was, it had something on there for everybody. Free so each of those body. different neighborhoods, you could pick where you wanted to hang out. So most of we hung out was mostly at the Aquadome over at the uh, at the Overlook. Yes. We hung out a lot in at the hideaway, hideaway, which was the adults only section. So, um, but I said we hung out the most in those sections. And so when we got on the ship, I quickly understood why the price tag was a price mm -hmm. tag. And mm -hmm. to answer that major question you hear, is the price worth it? Yes, yes, it is. They did not cut costs. When nothing. Nothing. Like usually you go on a cruise ship, you'd be like, okay, they spent all the money here. And the rooms were like crap. And yeah, and they cut costs over here. No. 
No, no. They paid two billion dollars for that ship, and you can see the two, two billion, billion dollars, dollars for that ship. And a lot of people have been saying we're just gonna wait until the price go down before we actually sail. Uh you're gonna be I, waiting yeah, a while. You've been waiting for a while because this ship has really set the precedence for the cruise world, in my opinion. I don't even know how another cruise line will be able to... Like, where do you go from yeah, here? will be able to top this shit, man, because it's so much on it, man. It's like... Whew. You don't have to leave. Yeah, you and don't. For a person like myself that loves resorts, I felt like when I felt how I felt when I went to the Hard Rock yes. in Punta Cana, like it had its own... On water park. Like, we're not talking about just one or two rinky-dink slides to say we have slides on the ship. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's a freaking water park. Yes. With a slide that has a raft that goes off the side of the ship and comes back in. Yeah, you felt like you felt like you was at a real water park. Because you are. Because you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're at a real water park. You have infinity pools. They even have a version of an infinity pool for the kids. Yes. Down <clears throat> in their neighborhood. Yes. A swim-up bar. I mean, the ice skating rink. The biggest one on SC. Yeah. Like, when Royal said, we're going to spend $2 billion, you, yeah. they made sure that when they spent the money, that they were going to say... They were going to be able to put the label of biggest, first, yes, best in front of that. Yes. I see what they did there. Yeah, they did. And then for those of y'all who are worried about being trampled over and that's all these people all in one spot now, on our sale, and we had about 5,000 people on there because mm -hmm. they didn't want to stress out. Oh, Overcrowded or stress out the, the, staff. the staff, which I can appreciate. Shout out to Royal Caribbean for that. Yeah, yeah, because they sure enough could have sold out that ship, and mm -hmm. you know, so that let me know that they really do care about their employees. Uh, but we didn't feel like the ship is laid out so well. You there was. You wasn't yeah. on top of people. Like, you had plenty. Everywhere yes. you went, there were plenty, plenty of spaces. Of to space. Plenty of places to sit down. Plenty of places to relax. Plenty mm -hmm. of places to eat. Plenty of places to drink. You just never ran out of stuff that you could actually do. Yes. Which is actually <laughs> also a very major problem that a lot of people, and even myself, <laughs> right. had was... By day two, I felt so overwhelmed. Yeah. Because there was just so much ground to cover. And it was the pressure of feeling overwhelmed to do everything was yeah. definitely a thing yeah, it was. on board. And it was one of those things that a lot of us on board talked about. And I promise you, they did that on purpose because you're going to have to go back twice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going you're gonna, to like seven days is not enough. It's not enough. And uh, me and Terry was talking about there is such thing as icon burnout. Mm -hmm. So let y'all know that up front that yep. you can get burnt out, uh, just like the queen said, because there's so much to do. You'll be so overwhelmed. So we implore you that if you plan on sailing on this ship, is to watch our videos, watch other creators, you know, look at the ship map and map yes. out exactly what it is that you want to do based upon what you saw in your research. And like the queen said, don't feel like that you have to do everything. Everything. So we figured that out quickly because we was like, we won't go here, we go here, mm -hmm. we won't do this, we won't do that, do that. And I understand, you know, you spending that that price tag and you feel like I, I want to get, get it my all. money's worth. <laughs> yeah. So with that said, let's talk about some things that you can actually do when you get on. We ain't going to list them all, but we're going to give no. you some of the stuff that's like really popular. So the first thing uh, we brought up was the water park, which is a category six water park that have six slides, y'all. They're not baby slides. No, six slides. So we actually got on... Three, two, of, three, three of them. Three well, of the six. Well, you got on two. I got on two of the six. And I got on three of the six mm -hmm. because I went and got on the drop slide, which is awesome. All right. Also, things you can do is you can you can hang out in the pool. You can hang out in the whirlpool. They got over, they got seven pools. Nine whirlpools, and then the Royal Bay Pool, which is their main pool, is the largest pool at sea. 
All right, some of the things that we enjoy that I think you will enjoy as well. The first thing is the Overlook. The Overlook is in the dome area. So if you look at the ship and you see that massive dome, yeah. as Terry <laughs> would call it, the Rihanna, uh, <laughs> that is where the Overlook is. And it is such a zen, quiet area. Nice. Very nice, Ooh. very peaceful. And they have these pods. Oh my and God. you can go into these pods. And when we say it's like the perfect influencer space or a space for you to go and get your work done because in the pods they actually have power plugs yeah. so that you can plug up do your regular um outlet or a usb or or, or just chill out and they have a, a very nice bar over there yeah, and everything really nice and fun fact I've been looking for Rover. Like, I wasn't stalking the dog like everybody else was. But I was like, I want to see Rover before I get off this ship. We were in the Overlook in a pod. And I just happened to have to go to the restroom. And I go around the corner. And I see something on the corner of my eye. And I'm like, what is that? Oh, my God, it's Rover. Like, the dog <laughs> was with the handler. And they were just in the... She was sitting down. And the dog was just in on the corner chilling. Doing her own thing. Like, even she appreciated the overlook. <laughs> so when I came back through, um, I asked, you know, where, was she available to take pictures? And I said, if not, don't worry about it. She said, no, go get right. your camera. Go get your phone and come back and take a picture. So that's how I was able to get the picture with Rover over in which the overlook, which was a dope experience. Yeah. Also, you have laser tag yeah. on this ship. They also have an escape room. It wasn't quite available yeah, and ready, ready for our sailing, right. but I can predict probably within the next month it will be available because that would have been dope. Yeah, It was just so many of us on board that knew each other were in the influencer space right. and YouTubers. We definitely could have probably did a game of... A, oh, that would, oh, that oh, would that have been, been so fun. So, fun. so yeah. you also have the Flow Rider. Yep. You have Crown's Edge. Which yeah. <laughs> there were more I people fitting to do that. <laughs> there were more people doing Crown's Edge than I thought would do it. Crown's right. Edge is basically when you walk the plane, zip line, and get flung over the side of the ship and brought back. Yeah, you hanging off the side of the ship. You're hanging off the side yeah. of the ship. That I part, don't understand. Yeah, I, I'm not ready for that. I'm yet. not ready for that at all. <laughs> Ice skating. They yeah. have the largest ice skating rink at sea right now, and it's in a like a kind of like an oval shape. Yeah, which is very cool. I'm a person that I like to watch the shows, but the theme of the show that they had this time was very cringy to me. Me and Jazz sat there the entire time, like, what are we watching? <laughs> <laughs> like, are we talking about atoms, elements? Like, what is happening? Here? Right. <laughs> Nevertheless, the ice skaters. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I also, can't fail to mention the hideaway. Yeah, the, I will get into it. Okay. That's my favorite place, yeah, though. Yeah, the adults only section, man. I'm telling y'all, they really, really did that. So we heard that actually that section was actually supposed to be For the, the kids? kids section. But, but I don't we were looking, we was like, how in the world this was gonna be the the way that is laid out, it didn't make any sense, but but anyway, but the pool is nice. The areas that you lay out is real nice. The hideaway bar is mm -hmm. real nice. It was just a sexy vibe over there, man. It was. The only thing that I can say about being in the hideaway area is I didn't like how you had to get there. You had to go through yeah, you had the to go children's area to be, able to, to, get be there. able to get there. And I thought that that was like a missed opportunity because... They probably could. I'm not an engineer, but there were so many different ways that they probably could have did that. And then also, they have the swim up bar. Yeah. The swim and tonic. Swim and tonic. I feel like those two spaces could have been combined. uniquely combined. Yeah. Because it seemed like the swim and tonic was an afterthought, in my opinion. Yeah. It it felt like we have a little bit of space. What can we put here? Ah. Swim bar. But you also have your casino. Casino was yep. decent. Mm -hmm. Good size. I never felt like we were over top of each other. No. I, right. They have a dedicated karaoke spot. Yeah, that's that looks dope. Like it's a karaoke club. Right. They ain't pushing no machine up for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dueling pianos is where you have the two pianos, two performers, and they yeah. just duel it out. And then they bring in the crowd for crowd participation. I didn't yeah. know that that was going to be a hit like it was. Yeah, and it was a, that was packed. 
every night. And it then even if you couldn't get inside the Doolin Piano, they had the bar on the outside that mm-hmm. you were able to walk Just up walk and up. get drinks. That was dope. We did that one night. We did. Because yeah. we couldn't get in. Right. That was dope. But we, <laughs> we got to get we got to get to these shows, man. So the, Okay. The first show that I want to talk about was The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you. If you don't go to not near other show, you better be there. You better go to that one. That one is going to change your life. And when I tell you, I've always said that I'm not a show person. Like, I can take it or I can leave it. <clears throat> oh, I took this one and I oh, will yeah. take it again. And I honestly didn't know what I was into, but it was it was a new show. Yeah. They were pushing it hard. And, and you did. can see that they did not spare no expense on the costumes. <laughs> The, the, the costumes, the, pro- the, the production, <laughs> all the above that made that show work. They spent some money. I'm I'll give you, you this one little hint. I love Universal Studios because Universal Studios embodies whatever the ride is. If you're in a twister, you feel the wind of the twister. Yeah. If you're in a hurricane, you, you feel, feel the, the wind, the water. Right. They did this on this show. Yeah. And that's yeah. all I'm going to tell you. Yeah, they did that. They did that on this show. So the next show would be the Aqua show. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure you guys heard about that. They actually took this show and went to a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. Um, we was a little disappointed because we only got about 30, 30 minutes, minutes of it. Uh, because they weren't ready. They weren't ready because they actually just filled the pool up. About a couple weeks. of weeks before right. we got on the ship. So we, we've we been trying to figure out how How they, did you practice this? Right. Because <laughs> they did amazing. They did an amazing job. So they really... Uh, I felt like the the show part on Allure was better. But on here, how they got everything set up with the robot arms and the, the dome. Waterfall. And the waterfalls. That, that just like... It brought it together. Yeah. So. The next thing that we participated in was Crazy Quest. And listen, there's been a battle between whether Carnival has the best quest or Or, Royal Caribbean. Caribbean. Baby, Carnival on a bad day blows you all out the water when it comes to quest. Yeah. But it was fun, though. But it was fun. It was fun. But it was was typical. Typical Royal (laughs) when it came to, (laughs) you know. uh. All right. The second thing we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about the food and the drinks. So first, I want to say overall that the food was good was overall, decent. and then the drinks overall was good. Now, of course, we feel this way on every cruise ship. There's always going to be hit and misses when mm-hmm. it comes down to the food and drinks. I agree. The only cruise line we feel like that don't have really a whole lot of misses on food is Virgin. Virgin. Uh, but let's talk about some of the places that we actually tried that we felt like that was good. So let's start with the specialty diners. Okay. So we did two specialty diners. Yep. We went to Hooked, which is their seafood restaurant. And first of all, they I said, we're from the Tidewater area. We know good seafood. Yes. So if the seafood <laughs> sucks, we're going to be able to tell you. So we first started out, my appetizer was a Merlin crab cake, yep. which was a big thing to say Merlin in front of a crab cake on sea. You better uh, make it sea. right. <laughs> and coconut shrimp. They both were good. The crab cake was a little mayo forward for me, but it was still good. And it was pure meat. Like there were no fillers, right. just the seasonings, vegetables, and that was it. And it was good. Yeah, it was a decent crab cake. Then we had the captain's platter, which came with the lobster tail, your choice of fish. That we got salmon. Yeah. And my uh, our um, waiter picked out mine for me because I didn't want salmon. I wanted something different. And it... It wasn't tilapia, but it tastes like tilapia. <laughs> so I wasn't blown away with that. And then we had shrimp. Then we had a choice of some size. So I got the broccolini. Stanley got the macaroni and cheese and yeah. the corn. Right. I always say nobody can do sides. For, right. Like yeah, the sides okay. or an afterthought. Right. I didn't like any of the sides. How, yeah, do you, a- how is corn not good? Right. It's water. <laughs> Water and butter. Salt and butter. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to get um fancy, put some sazon in it. Right. Um, For dessert, I had the coconut cream pie, which was decent. Oh, yeah. I forgot to talk about the lobster. The lobster was good, Oh, too. yeah. The lobster tail was yeah, good. Yeah, the lobster tail was good. Mm-hmm. I gave it a eight. Yeah, out eight out of ten. Yeah. yeah. So, the other specialty diner we did was the Azumi Hibachi. Hibachi. 
Uh, overall, that was a really good experience, y'all. If you've been to Hibachi, yeah, you know. It was typical Hibachi. Hibachi, yeah. And the food was um, good. But the highlight that stuck out for us, so first we got, I got the miso soup. Mm -hmm. I got uh, the, the green, green salad. I got the green salad. Uh, so far as what we got cooked, uh, we both got the chicken breast and, and the, the lobster. lobster. And then for dessert, I got some crisp, uh, <laughs> crispy sesame balls. They were horrible. I, horrible. I, I tried to give them. I tried to give them the best as I could. It was bad. She had the the, uh, the chocolate Malton cake. Yeah, it was good, but it was real rich. It, it was, was like really, really rich. Yeah. So it was one of those things that was good, but you couldn't eat more than two teaspoons of it because it was just so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the standout for us in that restaurant was the lobster. The lobster like, was everything. Yeah, the lobster was delicious. So I would say that restaurant probably is an 8 out of 10 as well. i give it a 7. 7 or 8 out of 10? Mm -hmm. It wasn't bad at all. Right. All right, the next place that we went and we talked about in the beginning was the Windjammer, uh, which I say they did really well. They did. For it to be a buff. For me, it was the presentation of the food. It won't yeah. just... Putting it in the pan and here you go. It wasn't golden it. corralling you. Yeah, they was not golden <laughs> corralling me. It was it was nicely presented. It was. Uh, they had so many choices of food. So every day they offer you something different. They may have Caribbean one night, yeah. seafood one night. It just it just goes on and on. Uh, the only thing that I that I I hated that I wasn't able to get to the Caribbean night because they had curry goat. Church chicken. And church chicken and i was like man and we were full from bad food we'll talk right. about that in a minute <laughs> so i would say for their buffet overall i would they give that a, i would give that a seven or eight out of ten as well because you know there was some hit and some miss i ate some macaroni and cheese over there that was horrible all right so the main dining room I'm not a fan of always eating at the main dining room because that's why I like to flip it up with the specialty main and then just off the beaten path. Right. But we ate at the main dining room, I think, three times. Yeah, I think it was about three. And each time it was decent. Yeah. Um, the wait staff was everything, though. Yeah, they was dope. The wait staff was everything. And we ate in the main dining room one day for brunch. Yeah. And surprisingly, that was really, really good. Good. Yeah. And we're going to go back and talk about room service because we do room service in the mornings a lot. Because one, right. I'm not a morning person. And two, I'm not a morning person. And three, I'm just not <laughs> a morning person. So we ordered the room service a lot, which is going to be the same food that's in the dining room. Right. But by the time it got to us, most of the time, the room service breakfast wasn't that good. It was great on a lower, but on this yeah. one, it wasn't that good. Yeah, so I would give I would give the the dining room a six six or seven out of ten. I would give I'll give it a little higher, seven point five eight. Hmm. Yeah, and I'll give the uh, the room service uh, maybe a five. Five. All right, sports bar. We paid for horrible food. Yeah, the that chicken wings were so hard. And the sauce that they put on it wasn't a jerk sauce. It was more like, let's find the hottest pepper, put it in a sauce, and dip the chicken in it. Nachos weren't that great. We picked over them. Yeah, so the food that we had, I, I, I like three out of ten. All right. I'll give it a three. <laughs> I'll give it a three, too. Aquadome Marketplace. So the Aquadome Marketplace was over in the Dome area where the Overlook is. Mm -hmm. It's right around the corner. And it had like these... It reminds me of a mall where you have like the different um, dining stations where you just walk up and get your food. So they had a mac and cheese stand, which was called Max. Mac. Max. Yeah. Max, yeah. I got the macaroni and cheese. Everybody else loved the macaroni and cheese. I didn't like it. I got... The bacon macaroni and cheese, I didn't like it. I taste his pepperoni pizza macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I, like I didn't that like one. that either. I, she didn't like that one. I like that one. That mm -hmm. one was good to me. I'm very specific about my <clears throat> macaroni and cheese, though. They also had a Mediterranean place where you could get bowls, gyros, yeah. um, salads made with the freshly shaved meat, pork, chicken. I think yep. it was a beef up there, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Mm-hmm. That by far, that Euro was the best. Yeah, I I, I give that a, a nine ten, or ten out of ten. ten nine, nine, ten out of ten. ten. Yeah, ten, that talk was ten, good. Ten. <laughs> and that was called Feta Mediterranean. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. 
Then they had a place called Ginger, which reminds you of when you went to the mall and yeah. you got your your um, general soul chicken, chicken your, your sweet, sweet and sour, sour shrimp. shrimp. Yeah, it basically <laughs> was a spin on that had egg rolls, different things like that. The food for me was uh. But every time I tr- I tried it twice because I was like maybe it was too late for it to be good and fresh. Tried it again and it still was kind of like uh. But when I tell you the heartburn, every time I ate there the heartburn was so bad I thought I was dying. Right. I was like no I can't I can't even try this again. They also had a place with crepes. Yes. Baby, I did not get one but Addie had one. one. And, and I was she said over there it like, was delicious. And I never had the taste, because I told you I don't do a lot of sweets. And I never had a taste to go over there and get one. And now I'm regretting it because everybody raved about it. And right. that one was called um, Creme de la Crepe. And all of this food that we're talking about is included, except for when we said the specialty dining. Right. Um, the sports bar, we, we paid extra money for, for that. that. <laughs> and we also paid a delivery charge for the room, room service. service. Right. Not the food, but the service. Right. All right, so the next spot we visit was Sorrento's, which is their pizza spot. So we know this is going to be popular for a lot of you guys. Late you know, night eats. Yep. Yeah, so I got me three slices of pizza every single night. The he pizza, did. the pizza that I liked it the best was the pepperoni. Out of I didn't all like of them. it at all. Yeah, she didn't like it, so uh, I got it every single night. He so did. I, I, I will give the pizza. It's not the best pizza I had, so I will give it a six or seven out of ten. That's fair. Uh, but it was good. But it was good. It, it did. It did what it needed to do at late <laughs> night. It did. If you know, you know. Right. <laughs> I give mine a five. Give it a five. I had the barbecue chicken pizza, and I didn't like it. The uh, the next spot we did was the El Loco Fresh, which is the Mexican taco stand. Like which, a cantina? Yes. And as it was on the lower, it was a hit over there. To me, it all was good. I had some, I had a burrito. I had nachos. I had chicken, rice, you name it. I had it all. So I would I would give that spot an 8 or 9 out of 10. I as would far give as it an 8 and a half, 9, yep. And the last place we want to talk about is the Pearl Cafe. So yes. the Pearl, as we saw, as we talked about on our impressions of the ship, the Pearl is actually a functional staircase to get to the Pearl Cafe, which is located on the backside of the Pearl. Yeah. The Pearl Cafe stayed open 24 hours. Yep, 24 I appreciate this place yes. because I felt <clears throat> like when we were on a previous sailing that at night, you didn't have any options other than pizza. And I'm not a pizza person really on land either. So I was like, I, if I could get me a nice wrap, sandwich, salad, or something like that, right. I'd rather do that at night than to eat a heavy pizza and have that on my chest all night. That did it for me. And they also had cookies, y'all. Like I said, I'm not a sweets yeah. person, but everybody was tearing these coconut cookies and these chocolate and we chip cookies. One. I got the chocolate chip, chip cookies, one. and baby, they taste like McDonald's the cookies, man. cookies straight out the oven. Yeah. If you know, you know. But the only <laughs> thing that I will say about the Pearl Cafe is they were a sandwich spot, a wrap place, right? Um, salads with no condiments. Yeah, no condiments. Nope. We would ask, like, do you have mayo, mustard? No. We don't provide that over here. How do you have sandwiches that don't come with anything? Right. And you don't have condiments. So fix that, Royal Caribbean. Yes. Quickly. And I would give overall the, the uh, Pearl Cafe for what we ate, I would give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. I would give it a 9. It would have actually been a 10 for me if we had condiments. All right. Let's talk about the drinks. So we're going to go through and we're going to give you uh, some of the bars and some of the drinks that we Our really things. enjoyed. Um, we tried quite a few different ones because we got the drink package. Talk about it. Yes. Uh, so those family members has been around a while. Y'all know when I go on vacation, all I drink is Long Islands. Mm-hmm. I think I might have had only two Long Islands this whole trip because yeah. <laughs> I was like, I really wanted to try Different cocktails wanted to not, package. yeah, not not be a cr- creature habit and pay. We paid like thirteen hundred dollars for the drink package. Anyway, I'm gonna use that to drink Long Islands all week. No freaking way. So the first um bar that we're gonna talk about is the fourteen hundred bar. Mm-hmm. Um, the two drinks that stuck out for us. The first one was the cable car. That was so good. Oh, that, that was, was really a delicious good. drink, and that was a drink that I got. 
the the second drink that we got was called the first song. That was the drink that the queen got. And then if you have the drink package, always make them upgrade your liquors to the premium. To the premiums. Yes. Um, next place, Rye and Bean, yeah. which is over in the Aquadome area. It was a bar that we were like, for me, I was like, everything is tea based or, or coffee, coffee based. based. I was like, I'm not going to like nothing over here. Like, maybe in the morning they get you a good, like, spike coffee. Right. Maybe. But Stanley had a hibiscus tea punch. That was good. Woo, that was good. Yeah. I I, I would give that a, a, a 9 or maybe 10 out of 10. That's, that, that, that one was, was good. That was a 10 out of 10. That was good. I had a hot toddy and a tea kettle. It was good. But when I drink a toddy, I think it... it Bring sickness together yeah. for me. <laughs> and for me, I was like, I can't enjoy this because I feel yeah, like... it was good, though. But it was good. So it if was you're good. on the ship and you feel like you need something to break out something, yeah, go over to Ryan Bean and get you that um hot, that hot toddy. Yeah. Then was another drink. We got um, me, Terry, and uh, Damien, Damien got this one called the Chai. Uh, old fashioned, it, it was okay. You yeah. couldn't taste the chai. Yeah, it was It was okay. It wasn't like the best... Uh, so I, I would I probably would have give that maybe a, a six or six out of ten. Okay. Uh, Next one, Cantina Fresca Bar. Oh yeah. So that is right beside El Loco Fresh, and my drink over and over and over and over and over and over again was the Fuego Fiesta. Fiesta. Fuego Fiesta. Oh, that drink. And it has a rim of hitting. black salt on the side. Yeah, I, I give like, that one ten out of ten. Ten I, out of ten. I think all of us probably Every drunk, time. drunk that one the most because at first we started off with the Cozumel Sunrise, and that was a really really good drink too. But, but it's too sweet. But after we got that Fuego Fiesta, boom, it was over. It was over. Hideaway beat on um, bar. I was just doing. My regular margaritas over there. He comes back with a, oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? Quickly became my drink of choice when I was at Hideaway. So, Schooner Bar was yeah. one of the next ones we went oh, to. Oh, yeah. Um, The guys were in love with this toasted marshmallow. Um, old fashioned. Old fashioned. And that shouts out to Terry from Addy and Terry. That old fashioned was good. Yeah, that's yes. a little look. You got to be a drinker for that. I'm not a drinker. Oh, she was good. That that for sure was a ten out of ten for me. Mm -hmm. All right, so swim and tonic, the swim up bar. Their menu was so limited, and the selection that were over there was, was so a limited, limited too, that yeah. you couldn't even get them to like create a lot of things for you. But I got a white port and tonic drink. And that was good because that it was, was made from white port wine, and then yeah. they made a it made it like a spritzer. It was really good, and I'll tell you what, you felt it <laughs> because I will yeah, say you was leaning too. <laughs> I will say out of all of the drinks, we never really felt anything except for the oh my god mm -hmm. over at Hideaway. The Fuego Fiesta. And the Fuego Fiesta. And that old and, fashioned. And that port for me. And the old fashioned for me. The margaritas, like the they margaritas, was was really good on the trip. You can't um, get them wrong, right? Yeah, you can. <laughs> well, yeah, you <laughs> yeah, can. you can. So I felt like they did really good on they the did. margaritas, and then uh, most time we get like the Cadillac margaritas, you know, with the grandma year on it, give a little extra kick. And a lot of places didn't have it. Yeah, so I, so. I, I, I will overall give the, their margaritas um, seven out of ten. The fourth thing we want to talk about is our cabin. So yeah, we man. selected the Infinite Balcony. Some Ooh. people call it the Infinity Balcony, but our cabin attendant said it's called the Infinite Balcony. <laughs> um, I like the room, but it's not going to be for every cruise and it's not going to be for everyone. Right. So let's go ahead and start off with our cabin attendant first. Our cabin attendant name was Arthur. Arthur was great. great. He was great. To us. He was funny. <laughs> he was caring. Like he, yes. he was on his ish. So cabin attendant, 11 out of 10. Yeah. Like, yeah. But 11 out of 10. 10. Yeah. Our room. So I will say. With the infinite balcony room, you kind of get everything in, in one. one. You have an interior cabin because once you put that shade down, you in there. It's dark as heck. Right. If you bring the shade up but leave the window open, I mean the window up, then you have an ocean view yep. balcony. Then if you put the window down, 
it's also a balcony. balcony. And all of that space is usable interior space yes. in the room. I actually <clears throat> love the room. I did too. I will say this. The problem that we will have is different climates and different times may not be suitable for that room because the room does not allow you to have dual temperature control. Yeah. Once that window goes down, the, the, the thermostat shuts soft. off. Yeah. Just as it would as if you left your balcony, balcony. door open on right. a traditional balcony, you can't control it. It's also loud. So when you bring that that shade down or that window down, it's yeah. <laughs> so if you have somebody that's in the bed and you're trying to get your zen on your time with your makeup or whatever, it's gonna wake them up. Yeah. So I will say that it's not for everybody and it's not for every climate. It's not for every cruise. Right. But it was a great experience and we love the additional space. We use that area for our office. Honestly. Yeah, that was our office. That yeah. was our office. We put the tables our there. Our office balcony. Our <laughs> office balcony. You couldn't have got a better view. But what I loved about the cabin also was they put a lot of the electronic fe the electronic features of the room within the app. app. Yeah. I said shout out to Virgin, Virgin Voyages, Voyages. <laughs> yeah. because they did that. Yeah, because you could control the thermostat. You could open the window. The TV. You can scroll the TV. The only thing I wish that it did also work was the balcony window. It did not work that. It yeah. only it only worked the shade. And then our balcony <clears throat> window kept getting stuck. Yeah. We didn't call it in because I didn't feel like doing it. I should have because the next person gonna have the issue. You push the button and it'll stop. Yeah. And then you gotta kind of finagle it like you would do an old window. Right. And then eventually it'll just kind of fall back in track and go back down. Um, did we say the app control the lights too? I don't know if we did. Yeah, but the app um, the app control also controls the lights. Controls the lights, so you just can lay in a bed and just just control do everything. Everything. Plenty of storage. Plenty, Plenty of storage. Like they, yeah. It wasn't in a traditional sense though. They were in these like nooks. Yeah. And they had them in these corners. So they always had these shelves and plenty of outlets. Yes, USB, plenty. USB and USB C. Yeah. The bathroom was pretty tight. But I can say I appreciated a normal size shower. Yeah. The shower was oblong. I didn't have any issues in it. Nobody's no butt issues. was touching the glass. Yeah. We weren't in a time capsule. Right. I <laughs> like yeah. the freaking shower. <laughs> but that was it. The room was great. Yeah. You have no I, problems at all. We yeah. were on deck nine. Mm -hmm. We will say that at night, the ship creaked. Creaked. Like one night, I thought somebody was on the side of the ship banging on our window. <laughs> <laughs> like when I say it did like this. God, like, God, don't. I said, is the ship about to break apart? Don't get concerned. It's because the ship is it's new. new, yeah. And it hasn't settled yet. You know how when you buy a new, new house, house? Yeah. Like, our house did this for like three years. At yeah. night, my office would go, boom, boosh. Like, Think somebody that? walking through the house. Really? <laughs> First time it happened, I'm so glad I was not in here by myself. So don't get af don't get afraid of it. That's what that was. But this was the first experience I've had with a creaking ship. Yes. <laughs> All right. The fifth thing we want to talk about is uh, Royal Caribbean's private island, Coco Cay. But in particular, their new adults only section called Hideaway, Hideaway. Beach. Let me tell you, y'all. They did it. With this. Yes. Game uh, changer. Game changer. So first of all, I want to start off to say this, that actually it's not 100% original. Uh, we feel like that they actually Bit got off the of. concept from Bimini. Mm -hmm. They took Bimini Beaches experience and elevated, elevated it. Because they added so much, so much more over there that you can mm -hmm. do. So first of all, when you first get there, you walk in and you see the ocean. And it is well the beach. I'm yeah. saying ocean beach was the same thing, which was beautiful. It was beautiful. You nice walk around, blue. then you run into the huge, huge swim up pool bar. We was really concerned about the pool bar, the swim up, because usually in swim up, you it is tight. It's tight, and they're usually not heated. Yeah. This was heated. Heated. 
And it was like plenty of space for you just to hang out. The only thing I didn't like was they only had like three tables in the pool. In the pool, I agree. That and, you can and, hang out on and little cutouts. Yeah. Because so, if you've ever been to um, uh, Oasis Blue, Lagoon, yeah, they have they plen- have plenty of different spaces that you can just kind of like sit in. Yeah. Or have a table and have a you know I call them conversational areas. Yeah. Then the drinks. We drunk Bahama Mamas <laughs> the whole time. Now, they want the best Bahama Mamas. I'm not going to say they want the best, but they were strong enough to get us where we needed to be. I went further than I needed to be. <laughs> I went further than I needed to be. Royal Caribbean, either y'all going to have to get more chairs or you're going to have to sell less tickets. We could not find a chair yeah, high or low. So I finally found one chair and I was like, we just going to put our stuff on the chair anyway. And thankfully, there was a nice lady that saw me struggling with finding a chair. Yeah. She walked over and she was like, do y'all need another chair? And I said, we do, but we can make do. She said, no, we we have a family. Right. And I think we have one extra one that we don't need. And she picked that chair up and brought it over to us. And I was like, I thought that was so freaking nice. Yeah, that her. was dope. Um, she didn't know who we were. So no. I don't, it ain't had nothing to do with it. She was just really being nice. So we actually talked to someone that was on the media reporting staff because they were all over this if we didn't yeah, say that they already. Was everywhere. They were everywhere. So she rolled up on us and asked us what we thought. And I told them, I think that Royal Caribbean and other cruise lines as well need to invest in cubbies and lockers. Yes. Especially for their beaches <clears throat> and their pool areas because mm-hmm. you normally don't need a chair. Right. You just need to use put your, need, the chair. Need, you just need to put your stuff down. Yeah, to put your stuff down. But if right. you had a locker, it would free up a whole lot of these chairs that people are really lounging in. Because look at me, we have two chairs and we're up in the pool. Yeah. So she said, note it and gonna work on that. Right. So if y'all come back to Hideaway Beach and y'all start to see lockers where you can pull your key out and take your key with you, that was me. Let's talk about the food over there. So mm-hmm. there we went to the snack shack and yeah. the two things that stuck out the most. Coconut shrimp. Was the coconut shrimp and that fish sandwich. Yo. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Yo, yes. 10 out of 10. That fish sandwich, maybe a 20 out of 10. <laughs> that fish sandwich was the bomb. Now, it could have been because we were lit, but I don't I think don't so. I don't think so. Yeah, we we know we know a good fish sandwich. But they had like so many other eating spots. So they had like a whole pizza spot that we didn't make it a to. pizza. Yeah, like a Building. Whole, like, yeah. The but we never. Pizza on the beach. They were raving about the seafood pizza. Yeah. We just never got over there. They, the girls came out with the champagne guns. Yeah. We the did champagne some champagne shop. showers. Oh, yeah. That was like. So we had an amazing time yeah, over we did. at Hideaway Beach. So much so that a lot of people that said that they were on the other islands, they didn't enjoy their time because Hideaway basically took, took all everybody. the fun yeah, yeah. and brought it over there. I said, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the DJ was popping. Yeah. They brought balloons out, not balloons, balls, yeah. which reminds me of Costa Maya. Costa Maya. Costa Maya always brings the balls out and everybody turns into big kids. Yep. It was a good time. It was a great ending to a great trip. Yeah, it was. All right, the last and sixth thing that we're going to talk about is the pros and cons that we feel on the Icon of the Seas. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to tell you who we feel like the Icon of the Seas is, is for. for. All right, so we will start with the pros. Mm-hmm. So the first pro I would say that with this ship, Royal Caribbean totally embodied the ultimate family vacation. Like Mm -hmm. they, I mean, this is the ship that you want to bring your family on. I'm telling you this right here. The next pro that I would say that there were no long, no long lines. We talking about from the elevator to the quick eat spots. Sorrento's at night. This, yep, Sorrento. At one night, Sorrento line was long, but it was long, but it went by so fast it didn't feel like it was long. Mm-hmm. So you would think on this huge ship that you would be waiting forever for everything. You don't. Everything yeah. is pretty quick. And we talked about in our live when we did it on the ship. We don't know how they do crowd control. Right. But they have it down to a science. <laughs> yes, they do. The The crowd control made it feel like a lot of times the ship was empty. Even doing our live walkthrough, people were like, where is everybody? And I said, 
this is how it is. Yes, everybody like, so everybody spread out. Everybody disperses yeah. because there's so much going on at one time that you could have a thousand people over there in the skating area. You could have 500 people in the laser tag area. Like the disbursement is crazy. crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Yep. The the next pro, and this is like a major big pro, was the water park was included and the flow rider was included. You did yeah. not have to pay extra. Actually, I feel like they could probably could have charged extra for the water park. They could have. And and, and I would have paid us, it. We would have paid it. We would have paid it. But shouts out to Royal Caribbean for they inc- didn't. yeah for <laughs> including that. The Pearl Cafe being twenty four hours major 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 pro pro and the food was included. The only thing you paid extra for is that they also had a Starbucks in there, and of course yes. Starbucks is an additional cost. So right, shouts out to them for doing that. Another pro is we talked about the ship being so walkable. It it just never felt like <clears throat> you walk very far. Right. Because you usually didn't have to go from aft to forward, forward to aft. It usually was you were near the middle. You had to go here, go here. Major, major pro. Yes. All right. The first con that I would say is the price to get on this ship. It's it is an expensive price tag it is i'm not going i'm not going front and because of that a lot of people might not be able to experience it because of that price tag so i think that's a major con i know for some of you guys fomo is kicking your tail Mm -hmm. you excited do not go in debt for this for this trip it's 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 worth it but it's not worth it to do it in debt if you ain't got Mm -hmm. the cash to pay for it, wait till you get your cash up to be able to pay for it, mm-hmm. so that at least that when you get back from this amazing trip, you have, you a, have a peace of mind <laughs> that I, I don't have no remaining debt. And that leads me into the second con, the nickel and diamond. Baby, so we weren't the only ones that kind of complained about this because uh, this consensus that we paid so much to get on there. <laughs> But you still had to pay for certain other stuff that we felt like should have been should have been included. Included. So um, the first thing would be over at the hideaway, um, at the hideaway, in the back of the ship, that you had to pay for the in pool beds. And they only had what three? Three. They only had three. And I'm um, looking at my notes now. So it was the beds ran anywhere from two fifty to three fifty per day per bed per, per bed. Day. Per day that you wanted to actually take advantage of that. It came with um, champagne. It came with a glass. Uh, it came with pool towels. It came with uh, water and a tray. And a tray. And a dedicated um, bar service. But you had no umbrella. You were in the middle of the sun. So it was like you paying all of that money to, to be bake. to drink your moet in the sun then also they had over there what they call day beds um that gave you the ocean view same thing same they were thing. in the dead sun they were in the worst yeah no 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 umbrellas those ran anywhere from two to three hundred dollars a day mm-hmm. then not they, worth not it not worth it they had stuff that was free for example like the flow router was free but if you wanted to learn how <laughs> to do it safely, to do it safely, you had to pay for it. <laughs> yes, yes. They had um, pickleball on board. For some reason, pickleball is really like the thing now. But in order to learn how to play pickleball, you had to pay hefty price tag for the lessons. Crown's Edge, Crown's Edge. You can zip line on this ship for free. It's very much another version of zip lining. Yeah, but. You have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But in their defense, they do give you a video and pictures. Yeah. So that kind of yeah. so that kind of helps out. That yeah. kind of helps out. Yeah. So So we would think like for the amount of money that you pay, a lot of those things should have been included. Yes, people was gonna be rushing and racing yeah. to them um, because they were so nice, but mm-hmm. they should have those should have been included in the yeah. price. Um another con for us is the skating ring, which was called uh, zero. Absolute zero. Absolute zero. So in order to get to the ice skating rink, you had to go through the sports, sports bar. bar. And if you know anything about a sports bar, the sports bar is always packed. 
Yeah. And they had these pool tables and like air hockey and stuff in the middle as they should. It's a sports bar. Right. But try to get an entire flow of people going in and out of venues, going through the area. It got now that is probably the only place that I will say got really congested. congested. Yeah. Really quickly to a point yeah. where I was like, get me out of here. It's too much going on at one time. So there were certain areas that I felt didn't have a flow. The club, you had to kind of go to the front of the ship and walk or, back or go, or go through, through the, the casino. casino to get to the club. Yeah. It was kind of a weird setup and it really didn't feel like a club to me. All right. So this is the part where you want to know our genuine opinion of who we think that the icon of the seas is for and who it is not for. Right. We have mentioned that we believe that this is the ultimate family, family vacation. vacation. And as a married couple without children, did we enjoy it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But I will say this is definitely your family vacation, mm -hmm. your annual family vacation, your family reunion. Yep. This is your girlfriend's trip. This yes. is your guy trip. This is a couple's trip couples yeah. with an s yeah i feel like if we had have been on this ship by ourselves we wouldn't have gotten the ultimate experience right that we could have gotten because there was so much to do but all things aren't for everyone right so for me i felt like i could easily have gone on a smaller ship with the things and the amenities and the entertainment that fit my lifestyle more than it would be me combing through those things right. that did not mean anything to me. So there were certain elements of this that I said, everybody is not going to partake in. So why pay the extra price tag right. to just experience things that you're not going to do just right. because they're <clears throat> on board? I will say that I don't feel that this is the best sailing for solo cruisers. A lot of times solo cruisers go on cruises and they immediately mingle. People gravitate yeah. to them. Right. Um, they start to not feel so alone. Some of them want to feel alone and that's cool. That's but cool. I felt like on this ship, because it was such an, an overtaking People got lost in the right. sauce of trying to figure out what they were doing and being in the middle of what they were doing. I felt like if you were a solo that didn't have other solos on board with you that you can maybe link up to, it could have gotten very overwhelming very yeah. quickly. That's what I felt like on here. Would we do it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we said we go back to it's like either at our family or going mm -hmm. with some couples. Yes. Yeah. Because it was a good time. Yeah. With the couples and we organically just kind of flow flow together. together. We never yeah. planned to be together. Yeah. We just our interests on the ship were the same. Keep all of that in mind. Don't want to put the FOMO on you. Don't right. want to put the pressure on you that this is the ultimate trip that everybody needs to go on. It's not for everyone. Yeah, it's not for everyone. But it was an amazing and an ultimate experience. Yes. I would not trade it for the world. Yes. If you have enjoyed this review, you want to check out our first video of our embarkation day on the Icon of the Sea, and we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.